after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week began to dawn, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. His countenance was like lightning, and his clothing as white as snow. And the guards shook for fear of him and became like dead men. But the angel answered and said to, to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen as he said. Come see the place where the Lord lay. And go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And indeed he is going before you into Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. So they went out quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy. If you underline your Bibles, I want to underline those two phrases, fear and great joy. How, what a combination of emotion that is right there. But with fear and great joy, they ran to bring his disciples' word. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, rejoice. So they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. And Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brethren to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. Father, thank you so much for this great news that Jesus is alive. Lord, we pray your blessing upon this sermon and this presentation this morning. Lord God, let everything that's said and done bring glory and honor and praise to you, bring edification to the church, and if anyone here does not know you, may, may it be a roadway into beginning a living relationship with you. We welcome your Holy Spirit, Lord, to oversee everything and to do everything according to your perfect will this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is truly great news. Verse number six. He is not here. He is risen, just like he said. I, I liken this to uh, some other great announcements in the Bible. I can think of three of them. There's maybe more, but I, th three stand out to me. The first great announcement that I think of is in Luke chapter 2 and verse 11, when the angel said to the shepherds, There is born unto you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And another great announcement that will be coming in the future is found in 1 Thessalonians 4, 16. Paul writes and he says, The Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout. I wonder what he's going to say. I always wonder, is he going to say, yay, or whoa, or he's going to do something to get our attention. And with the sound of a, of a trumpet and the voice of an archangel, right? And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. That's going to be an awesome announcement. But the announcement we're going to look at today is found in Matthew 28 and verse number 6. And that announcement is, he is not here. He is risen, just like he said. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is the centerpiece of our faith. Because he is alive, we have hope. Because he is alive, we have a confidence and a guarantee that there's more to life than what we see and feel right now. Somebody say amen. That's a, that's a place to say amen if there's ever a place. In stage chapter 6, he says there, that we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but we, we fight against principalities and powers of darkness. and we, we wage war against the rulers of darkness of this age, spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. And he says, therefore, put on the armor of God, that you may resist the devil and stand. Likewise, and this is something we don't think about too often, but likewise, Jesus had fierce spiritual warfare during his life here on earth. Even before, I would say. Luke chapter 3 talks about Jesus' baptism. But in Luke chapter 4, it says after his baptism, he was filled with the Holy Spirit. He was led by the Spirit to go out into the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights where he was tempted by the devil. Now we don't know all that happened during those 40 days and 40 nights, but you can imagine, I mean, if you think you have spiritual warfare, think of what Jesus went through during that time as well as other times. At the end of the 40 days and 40 nights, we read in Luke chapter 4, that Satan tried to trip him up or try to confuse Jesus or make him think or do things contrary to the Word of God. He misquoted the Word of God, if you know the story. 
And each time Jesus set Satan straight and uh, correctly quoted the word of God. He defeated the enemy. But the scripture closes that segment by saying Satan departed from him for another opportune time. So it wasn't the only time that he had this interaction with Jesus. In Mark chapter 14, we see Jesus praying in the garden. You know the story. He was praying with drops of blood coming out, like sweat, like drops of blood pouring from his head. And he's praying to his father, oh God, oh Father, if there's any way, take this cup from me. You can just imagine the spiritual warfare going on. And Jesus resolves that by saying, nevertheless, not my will, but let your will be done. Luke tells us that then angels came and ministered to Jesus. So Jesus went to the cross. He literally died on that cross. And you could almost sense, not that it says it, but you could almost sense Satan and his cohorts gleefully clamoring together. We got him now. We defeated him. And Satan or Lucifer saying, I'm the champion, not Jesus. I think Satan forgot about that prophecy in Genesis where it says the serpent will bruise him on the heel, but the Messiah, the one coming, will crush him on his head. Little injury, heel, big injury, head. And permanent injury, head, coming. So yes, Jesus died. Ephesians 4 gives us a little glimpse of something. It says that he who ascended to heaven, he first descended to the lower parts of the earth leading captivity captive. And here's the theory of, uh, here's the, the point of that. As Jesus died and before he arose, he entered into the gates and he released those held captive that were waiting for their redemption to draw nigh. And he, he released them from captivity and made them captive unto himself and brought them to their eternal rest with God. So Jesus defeated Satan. He defeated Satan's hold over death. That adversary an enemy of our souls. Jesus' nemesis, old Beelzebub, is defeated. And I'm standing here today to tell you that Jesus Christ is the true champion. vast expanse of a timeless place where silence ruled the outer space. Ominously towering it stood, the symbol of a spirit war between the one named Lucifer and the morning star, the ultimate of good. Enveloped by a trillion planets, clean as lightning and hard as granite. A cosmic coliseum would host the end of the war between the Lord of sin and death and the omnipotent creator of man's first breath who will decide who forever will be the champion.
Then a chill swept through the mammoth crowd And the demon squealed with glee As a sordid, vulgar, repulsive essence was felt Arrogantly prancing, hands held high Draped in a sparkling shroud Trolled by demons, Satan ascended from hell Then Satan cringed, the sinners groaned The demons reeled in pain As a swell of power like silent thunder rolled With a surge of light beyond intense Illuminating the universe In resplendent glory Appeared the Son of God Then a persona, yes, extraordinaire, appeared in center ring. God the Father will oversee the doom. Opening the book of life, each grandstand hushed in awe. As majestically he said, now here's the rules. He'll be wounded for their transgressions, bruised for iniquity. When he said by his stripes they're healed, the devil shook. He screams, this is my specialty. I hate that healing junk. God said, you shut your face, I wrote the book. Then the father looked at his only son and said, you know the rules. Your blood will cleanse their sin and calm their fears. Then he pointed his finger at Satan and said, and I know you know the rules. Been twisting them to deceive my people for years. Satan cried, I'll kill you, Christ. You will never be this way. The demons wheezed, That's right. There ain't no way. Satan jeered, You're a dead man, Jesus. I'm gonna bust you up tonight. Jesus said, Go ahead, make my day. The bell, the crowd, the fight was on, and the devil leaped in fury. With all his evil tricks, he came undone. He threw his jabs of hate and lust, a stab of pride and envy. But the hands that knew no sin blocked everyone. Forty days and nights they fought, and Satan couldn't touch him. Now the final blow saved for the final round. Prophetically, Christ's hands came down and Satan struck in vengeance. The blow of death fell Jesus to the ground. The devils roared in victory. The saints shocked and perplexed as wounds appeared upon his hands and feet. Then Satan kicked him in his side and blood and water flowed. And they waited for the ten count of defeat. God the Father turned his head, his tears announcing Christ was dead. The ten count would proclaim the battle's end. Then Satan trembled through his sweat in unexpected horror. Yet, as God started to count, by saying, ten. Hey, hey, wait a minute, God. Nine. You're counting wrong. Eight. His eyes are Seven. His fingers are twitching. Six. Where's all this light coming from? Five. He's alive. Four. i
voice from mountains Loud and strong Captivity has been set free Salvation bought for you and me Cause Satan is defeated And Jesus is
Whatever we've been through, Jesus is identifying with the broken people of the world. He experienced all the pain, all the hardships that we also have experienced. Ultimately, he died on the cross and was put in a tomb where, where he rested for those three days. And this, I think, is, is, a, is a symptomatic of those of us who have died emotionally or have died spiritually or have died in relationships, relationally. We feel like there's no life in us left. But Jesus is identifying with those of us today. But he despised all that shame, all that stuff. He despised it all, but he kept his eyes on the victory. Amen. He endured the cross. He despised the shame. And for the joy set before him, he went through with what he needed to do. And then it says, he then sat down at the, at the right hand of the throne of God. It was his love and his joy that purchased our salvation. Oh God, I can't believe this. The worst thing about it. <coughs> <coughs> he just left it. We didn't even stand by him. I can't believe this. You should go back. What do you want to do? Mine? He'll arrest us too. Walk us and put us on the cross. I know. Probably next week we'll be up there. Maybe there's somebody to talk to. We know. We know. A lot of people are not in
Praise the Lord. Amen. Third thing we want to talk about today. Jesus is dead no more. If you remember the life of Jesus, when he was baptized by John, there was a voice from heaven that said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. This relationship between Jesus and his Father was unique and com complex. Jesus is quoted as saying, when you see me, you see the Father. He's quoted as saying, my Father and I are one, and I do everything that the Father tells me. In fact, he said, I don't do anything unless the Father tells me to do it, and then I go ahead and do it. 